so today I'm going to explain logarithms. Say we have the formula a equals b to the c. If we are given any two of the values for those variables, we can figure out the value of the third variable. For example, let's say that b equals 4 and c equals 2. Well, we can figure out uh, a by just squaring 4, and that tells us that a is 16. Or let's say that a equals 27 and c equals 3. Well, we can figure out the value of b by taking the cube root. And that will tell us that b is 3. I have previously done a video on both of these concepts. However, let's say that we have a is 25 and b is 5. That gives us 25 equals 5 to the c. To figure this out, we need to use logarithms. Now a logarithm works by we take the log of base b of a, and that gives us c. So log base b of a equals c. So if we were to use that here, we have the logarithm of 5, of or the logarithm base 5 of 25, and that equals 2. Which makes sense, because 5 squared is 25. Now, that previous example was a bit of an easy one. Most people know that 5 squared is 25, so I'm guessing most of you can figure out that c equals 2 right away. However, logarithms can also be much more complicated. For example, log base 17 of 31. Now, I at least can't do that in my head, and I'm guessing none of you can either. Which is why most logarithms are used with a calculator. However, most calculators can only do logarithms in base 10 or base E. And I'll get to E later. So, since your calculator can probably only do logarithms in base 10, your calculator can't really do this logarithm. Which is where the change of base rule comes in. So, let's say we have our generic logarithm, so log base b of a. The change of base rule allows us to rewrite this as log base k of a over the logarithm base k of b. Now, again, because your calculator can probably only do log base 10, k often equals 10. But k can be any number. It's just most common 10. Now, to show that that works, let's go look at an example. So, say we have the logarithm uh, base 100 of 10,000. Now, 100 squared equals 10,000, so this logarithm equals 2. However, we're going to check use this to check our change of base rule. So, we'll have the log base 10 of 10,000 over the log base 10 of 100. Now, 10 to the 4th will give us 10,000, so that is 4, and 10 squared gives us 100, so that is 4 over 2. And 4 over 2 simplifies down into 2. So as you can see, the change of base formula works. And whenever you have a logarithm such as this, simply rewrite it as log base 10 of 31 over log base 10 of 17, and then you can plug it into your calculator and solve it. Now, there are a few other properties, aside from change of base, that I want to go over for logarithms. The first of these is if we have log base b of x times y, we can rewrite that as log base b of x plus log base b of y. So, 
For an example, let's say we have log base 3 of 3 times 9. Now, if we're to do this the normal way, 3 times 9 is 27, so we have log base 3 of 27, and 3 to the 3rd gives us 27, so the log of this is 3. Now, if we're to do it the other way, we would have log base 3 of 3 plus log base 3 of 9. Now, 3 to the 1st is 3, so this log is 1, and 3 to the 9th, or 3 to the 2nd is 9, so this log is 2. And of course, 1 plus 2 is 3. So as you can see, this log works. And it works for all bases, not just base 3. In fact, you can test it out for yourself just to make sure. Uh, but as for other logarithmic properties, we have, if we have log base b of y over x, that can be rewritten as log base b of y minus log base b of x. So, again, if we have an example, let's say we have log base 4 of 64 over 16. Now, 64 divided by 16 is 4, so we have log base 4 of 4, and of course, 4 to the first is 4, so this log is 1. Now, if we're to do it the alternative way, we will have log base 4 of 64 minus log base 4 of 16. Now, 4 to the 3rd will give us 64, so this log is 3, and 4 squared gives us 16, so this log is 2. And of course, 3 minus 2 is 1. So as you can see, this logarithmic property works out as well. Now, our third logarithmic property, at least the one I'm going to show you, is if we have log base b of x to the y, we can rewrite that as y times log base b of x. So, for an example, Let's say we have log base 2 of 8 squared. So if we were to do this the normal way, uh, 8 squared is 64. So we have log base 2 of 64. Now, 2 to the 6th will give us 64. So this log is 64. Now, the other way, we will have 2 times log base 2 of 8, and 2 to the 3rd gives us 8, so we're going to have 2 times 3, and of course 2 times 3 is 6. So this logarithmic property works out as well. Now for the final logarithmic property I'm going to show you, it is if we have log base b of the white root over x. That can be rewritten as log base b of x over y. And, as I've done previously, we're going to have an example here. So, let's say we have log base 5 of the square root of 25. Now, again, the normal way, the square root of 25 is 5, so that's log base 5 of 5. And that log is, of course, 1. Now, the alternative way, we have log base 5 of 25 over 2. Because the square root, it would have a 2 for that y. It's the, uh, essentially the second root, but it's often just referred to as the square root. But nevertheless, since 5 squared is 25, this log is 2, so that gives us 2 over 2, which is, of course, 1. 
So as you can see, all of these logarithmic properties work out. And the examples I used are not the only ones that work. Again, as I mentioned, you can try other examples to test them for yourself. But so these are some of the logarithmic properties. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are two main forms of logarithms. Log base 10, which is popular because we use a base 10 number system, and log base e. Now, log base e is often written as ln, which means natural log. And the reason natural log is so popular is because e to the x is popular. e to the x is often used in continuously changing systems. For example, a population or like a bank account. It's e to the x is good at modeling how those systems change. And since natural log is the opposite of e to the x, natural log in turn becomes popular. Now, there are a few features of logarithms that you should keep in mind. The first of these is that log base b of b is always 1, because b to the first power is just b. Now, the next for these is, say we have log base b of 1. That always equals 0, because anything to the 0th power is always 1. Now, for the, th the third one of these is if we have log base b of z 0, it is impossible, because anything to any power will not give you zero. There is not a way to put something to a power and get zero. Now, the last of these I'm going to mention is if we have log base b of a, and a is less than one, then c is negative. And this can be shown with an example. For example, let's say we have one-half. Now, one-half is the same as two to the negative one. And this same procedure can be applied to anything of any base that is below one. But, so these are just a few logarithmic function or features that you should keep in mind when working with them. But, so that was my video about logarithms. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something, and see ya.